In the next exercise, we're going to do simulations. It's an introduction before the Monte Carlo. In this case, it's going to be quite easy uh, calculating how often a certain dice will roll. So what we have over here are the ices of the dice from 1 to 6. What we want down here is 1000 simulations of that value. So randomly take one of them, right? So throw the dice. How are we going to do that? By calling a function called random between. Random between takes a bottom value, in our case 1, and a top value 6. So it's going to be a value between 1 and 6. Oh look, we rolled 6. So what we do now is we populate 1000 values. The easiest way to do that is just by double clicking over here. If I do that, oh, click next to it, up, there you go. We have 1000 values. You already saw that the 6 changed to 3. That's because every time you refresh, which you do by pressing F9, the values, oh, the values will change. Let's see, 4, 2, 4, okay. Um, that's it. Now that we have all the values, notice that over here, the whole range showed as x6 values. Now I've already prepared all the variable names for this function, but if you go to names, define, click on it, you can see over here all the values we are going to use. So exercise 6, 7 and 8 have all values, and every time they show you some rows. So, that's going to make it a little bit easier to work with because over here what we want to do now is count in this range how often i1 appears therefore you have a function called count if count if there it is that's the first one so the range is called x6 value and the criteria is a6 Hop, there you go so one happened 160 time, but if I double click, it will refresh and it shows 171. Okay, so now we have all the values. We of course now want to create a char. So let's just select those values. Say that we want this 3D staff char. There you go. It already shows one to six, but that's just coincidental. If you um, select the data, you will see that there is actually no x value which we will actually select taking from here to here and we're gonna call it a name is the number of the dice there you go so that's our graph kind of can change this name also to dice draws okay oh yeah i want to fix the vertical values because they are random, now they are not bigger than 180, but otherwise, the, if we don't fix them, the char will jump from, from size. So make sure it sticks on 200. It's not automatically. Okay, it's gonna look like this now, a little bit change. It's not so, many, so much change. But if I now refresh all the time, you can clearly see how the values change. Now what you've noticed is that the values more or less stay in the same uh, level, right? So around 150. Now, this is a, a random distribution. So you see that if you throw the dice in this way, you, you have equally chance of one or the other value. So let's move on to exercise seven. In exercise seven, we're gonna work with two dices. We're gonna see what's the sum of the dice and what, how it differs from counting the dice twice. So again, we want random between from one to six. It's quite easy. Copy paste it, put it over there as well. Don't forget to populate the whole simulation. Double click, app, there you go. So the sum, it's very easy. Dice one plus dice two. And again, for all simulations and twice a dice just means that you Take one dice twice. So take dice one. There you go. And we're gonna populate the table, the simulation. Sorry. Okay. So that's all our data. So now what we're gonna do with it is again, just to be com complete, we're gonna do the count if again uh, for all the dices, but we are not going to use the first two. You'll see. So it's called exercise 
six. No, we're exercise seven now. Dice one, dice one. And our first value, you see the, something wrong with the layout, but it's just a seven. There you go. And over here, it's count if again. This time it's x7 dice 2. And now I can actually select i1. There you go. Populate everything. Oh, okay, so again, you see they are in the same range, they are normal distributions. Thing is, when you take the sum of two dice, it will be different. So we take again, count if. This time the range is going to be this one. It's called x6, 7, sorry. Sum. See, selects everything. And the range is called e7. Uh, sorry, criteria. That's one. Count if. The range is x7 twice and the criteria is this i. So of course the smallest i now is tw 2, right? Twice, 2 times 1. There you go. And if I now populate this, and I populate that, you should already see the difference, right? So, let's make a graph out of it. Select those two. Gonna take a little bit uh, different. This one is... Mm, this one's gonna be easier to see. So, there you go. Oh, sorry. There you go. Put it over here. A little bit more down there. Okay. It's okay. Should we change stuff? Yes, of course. We sh should make sure that this stay fixed again. 200 fixed. Okay. And then we need to select the data. Let's see what's down here. The names, series one. The name of series one is going to be sum of two dice. And the one of series two is going to be twice a dice. Okay. And then the x value is going to be from one to 12. Because now it counts from one to 11, you see. From 1 to 11, that's not correct. We want it from 1 to 12. Okay, there you go. But the important thing, of course, is that you see that if you take the sum, you get this kind of normal distribution, more or less. While if you take twice the dice, you, of course, get the random distribution. If I refresh it again, it will change a bit, but the overall pattern is clear, right? Sometimes it's clearer than another time. That's exercise two. So now if we work with two dices, what we're gonna do in the next exercise is we're gonna work with the sum of four dices by twice creating uh, the, the dice one to two and three to four. It's gonna be a little bit different now. What we're gonna do is, um, well, we'll just show you. We, we started with um, dice one and dice two and the possible combinations you can have over here. Right, see them? And should do that in another screencast.